Hi, my name is Soup. Thanks for stopping by, coming in to listen. If it's your first time, appreciate the visit. And if you're returning, I appreciate the visit. Um, I always seem to have that problem. I don't really know how to start these things. I get all these ideas and I know where I want to go. I know how I'm trying to figure out the thoughts, but putting them all together, the coordination is really not my strong point. It usually comes together by the end, so I hope you stick around. It's uh, the beginning of a new year. An interesting year already. Not very far in at all. Almost enough time to cancel your subscription and get your money back for it, which I'm sure some of us already would. But... I think um, I'm going to stick with it. Try to ride this one out at least. Coordination's a funny thing. You see, as plans start to come together, they can branch off and move in different directions. And the different things that a group or one person even is trying to do needs to be put together. There needs to be some sort of plan. And that can be really tough. Especially when the purpose of what you're trying to do, your initial intents, aren't necessarily all the same. They're not all synced up together. And that can become awkward. You know, I've noticed... There's a lot of coordination that's been trying to go on, especially in the country as a whole. Over the course of 2020, there was a lot of events that involved a lot of coordination, and a lot of times it didn't necessarily work out the way that it was initially intended. And the results didn't always end up what they should have been or what they were originally intended to be. It was kind of disappointing to watch. And in the state of the world, as it is, it was really hard not to become involved, not to want to have a voice in that coordination, be part of the cooperation of those intent plans and making things go the way that they should have, as some might say. But I'm not really convinced there is a should have in any situation, really. It's going to be how it's going to be. And it almost goes to one of my least favorite sayings, that it is what it is. But there are some things that go according to plan. And in a famous movie from well, a decade ago now anyway, right? There was a really good speech about things going according to plan. How that can reduce the impact of a tragedy or something outlandish like a mass death or something like a war even. But the coordination and the planning of these things make something so horrific easier to take in. What's really crazy, though, is when uncoordinated plans go through. When things happen as they should have, big air quotes there, and the results of those things are so unknown that when they ki kind of come to fruition, <laughs> I don't even know if that's the right way to say that, when they're followed through with, the results are um, outlandish. And to some, it may seem like it's a tragedy. But to a lot of others, it just looks like exactly what was going to happen from the beginning. That's a hard thing to kind of comprehend all around. 
is that huge swaths of people are going to have different conclusions for the same coordinations and the same plans. If you decide to go through with one of your plans and you end up in a place that you weren't really sure that you were actually going to get to, what happens then? What do you do when you're finally sitting in the chair of power? I hope it's not just take a selfie. I find nature overall has a lot more coordination to it. The things in nature tend to have their own plans. And that's why it feels so weird when the power of humans can't overcome them. Things like changing climates or changing political climates or changing people or invasive species. Check out my last video for that. There's a really cool bug. They're found all over the world. Well, the genus is anyway. They're called plant hoppers. And their name kind of tells you what they do. They're little, little bugs. Lots of different kinds. But the juvenile species, and the juvenile of a certain species, um, has mechanical gears that grow into its hind legs. Its joints have literal cogs. And their main point is to take away the discrepancy in the brain signals of trying to hop, apparently from plant to plant, so that both legs can move at the same time. The mechanical cogs of an organic creature coordinating the movements of two independent limbs so that they move together. If one goes, the other one has to go too. I find that incredibly intriguing because mechanical gears to humans were invented 2,300 years ago. It seems like such an incredible thing that a bug has these built right into its own DNA. The craziest part is, as they mature, their insides start to change and their legs lose those mechanical gears. The brain power, the connectivity between the brain and the hind legs gets stronger. And the need for those mechanical gears to coordinate the movement of those back legs is needed less and less. And so the adult plant hopper doesn't have the mechanical gears in its hind legs anymore. It's as if the subconscious evolutionary mind came to this sudden realization that at a certain point, they don't need to move together anymore. That sometimes there is a separation of the needs and the wants and the coordinations. All the plans of the movement of the bug aren't really necessary. Because the instincts, the brain connection, the nerves, can make up for all of that. The internal mechanisms can change slightly while ending up with the same result. The mechanical gears aren't needed, but the plant hopper can still hop from plant to plant. And it survives. It goes on to breed and have more little baby plant hoppers who grow up to have mechanical gears built into their DNA in their hind legs. And the cycle continues. I don't think we could have planned coming up with mechanical gears 
somebody just did. The observations of the world around them and the way that things move together and the physics and the mechanics of physical objects brought to fruition an idea of interlocking pieces where the movement of one makes the movement of the other occur. I think we see that a lot in the way that humans interact with each other on a regular basis. It doesn't mean that we're always going to be the way that we are. I find understanding the patterns of human behavior less and less fulfilling because the patterns aren't really patterns. Of course, there's the old saying, history repeats itself, which it does a lot, but never exactly. It's much more like history rhymes with the present. It's really close. It makes things sync up, feel familiar, and you can try to coordinate and make plans and foresee conclusions. But in the end, things are just going to end up the way they should be. Maybe the timeline's significantly longer than we think it is. Because, really, the greatest ends, the finalization of any good plan, is the basis for the beginning of a, another really good plan. And the coordination of new processes and more ideas. And the culmination of all of those will go through the hero's arc and find itself finalizing and ending once again, where it can just build itself up into a new beginning. I find myself thinking about that plant hopper way more often than I thought I would. The mechanical gears of an organic object brought forth in nature from evolutionary tendencies and how those gears just fall away. I saw something recently uh, made a weird amount of sense in the state of the world today. You know, the biggest obstacle for leaving Earth's orbit isn't the height. It's the speed. You can only get so high unless you're going fast enough, which makes you go farther. So the speed is more influential than the height. The farther you get away, the less gravity pulls. But the more your fall will be impacted. But at a certain point, if you get far enough away from the Earth, your fall isn't a fall anymore. It's an, it's an orbit. And you're not careening towards the surface of the Earth to your very likely doom. You're spinning around the Earth, looking down on it in awe. It's incredible to think that of all the coordinated plans, of all the things that we have going on, it was 2,300 years ago that we figured out the mechanical gear. And there it was, bold face and evolution. It took us an incredibly long time to figure out how not to fall and just to orbit instead. I feel like I'm orbiting a lot right now. The more I think about that, the better I feel. I wasn't so worried about the height. I was worried about the fall. It didn't matter how high I was. The, the fall was going to be some sort of 
inherent doom. The mortality of rising up to a certain distance, whether it be physically or emotionally or professionally. I just needed to get high enough that the fall wasn't inevitably to doom, but that it was in orbit instead. The observation from up there must be beautiful. It pains me a little bit to really think about the fact that I will very likely never get to see that for myself. But it is wonderful to know that there are people who have, who are, and who will get to see that. And that we as people have made it possible for that to happen at all. That we came together. We coordinated all of our plans. Pulled through and fulfilled them so much that we can do it regularly. With ease. Usually with quite a bit of grace. And us stuck here on the surface get to look up in awe. The satisfaction. Finalized plans. All the coordination. Brought together. Whew. Right into orbit. wonder what that feels like to a little plant hopper, a juvenile one with mechanical gears in its hind legs. Bet those suckers go real fast when they jump, too. <laughs> well, I guess it, it is what it is, right? Maybe we'll figure it out. Maybe humans have only come so far. And just like that weird parabolic ratio of how technology is advancing, we're going to follow with it. Maybe all our coordination, all of our plans, we're just not looking at a long enough timeline. Maybe our time isn't even here yet. Maybe our time is just about to come. My name is Soup. Thanks for hanging out. Sky over the Atlantic. 